In this chapter we will do the hip jack rafters. First I'd like to show you this feature. Here you can see the way in which we made out the dimensions of each rafter. Please pay attention to the rafter marked as number 6. As viewed from the left side, 120 cm is the dimension from the tile cut of the rafter to the first bird's mold, the one which join wall plate. Then another dimension, 425 cm, is the dimension between the wall plate and the purlin and the third dimension, 163 cm, is the dimension from the purlins to the hip rafter. This is the furthest removed point between the purlin and rafter. And we are ready to move dimensions straight on the beams. The timbers that we are going to use for build the jack rafters are more friendly than that ones used in last chapter. Cross section of this is 8 by 18 cm, so they are relatively light, therefore works will be much more comfortable than it was until now. We begin tracing the beard's molds designed for the wall plates. Hip jack rafters are tilted relatively to the wall plates at a different angle than the hip rafters. In this case an angle is 37 degrees. This dimension is also read from the project. And now please take a look, we measure the distance between the angle of the wall plate and the place where the jack rafter will connect to the upper edge of the hip rafter. At this peak we are drawing two angles, one of them is the angle of the roof slope and the other is an angle of 45 degrees. This is the angle resulting from the position of the hip rafters, which are always the square diagonal. This of course we draw around the beam to make it easier to cut out, so there is no confusion. After reversing the rafters draw the rest of the lock. the same angle on both sides, then attach square and draw a right angle. In this way we obtained a beard's mold. This rafter is shorter than that one presented in the figure on the beginning of the film, which is why we had have only one lock, simply because the rafter will support only by the war plate and then go straight on the top of the hip rafter without touching a purlin.
In the following we will trace the longer one, there will be two beard modes of this jack rafter, first of those ones supported by the wall plate, exactly as shown before, and the second one by the purlin, and here we can see how it gets overhang of the rafters. This ending is optional, you can make it by different shapes, in our case it is the most simple tile cut. We did it by dividing the height of the rafter into three equal sections, then on the bottom we have cut out a third part, this way the top section will have a length of two thirds of the height of the rafter. The bottom is cut to the level, while the front one is vertical.
In the case of the envelope shaped roof, each jack rafters have a different size, so each one must be individually dimensioned. Firstly measured on the roof and then twice at the ground. As you can see, they are all numbered. On the wall plates are also numbered places where the concrete jack rafters will fit. This distance is measured at the slant because it is easier for us being on the roof measure the distance between the edge of the wall plate and the edge of the hip rafter uh, because the hips and the jacks have different thickness and if we wanted to measure the distance from the bottom of the hip rafter it would be hard to hit the right place. Now we draw the cut line around the rafters. Then the beard's mold. And here we draw the length from the lock to the tile cut. This length is the same for all the rafters, so we can easily cut to fit everything on the ground. And later, after assembly, all the overhang of the rafter are in the same line.
There is a huge amount of jack rafters, about 50 in the case of the roof which is constructed at this section. Now we can see again how to cut out the longest of them, those ones with two beard molds. This is the first one supported on the wall plate. Here we draw an angle that is formed after subtracing the angle of the roof and 19 degrees, that is in the slope of the roof is 37 degrees. This gives us 57 degrees and is the precisely this angle used here for drawing our lock. We also use this angle to mark the tile cuts. The same way we cutting the second lock, this one will support by purlin. In the case of the simple gable roof, the matter is much more easy, because in that case, all the rafters are equal. We also have no hip rafters. We don't have any heavy or complicated structure as in this case. So the gabled, so the gabled roof building is much faster and easier. However, this roof includes in its design a lot of interesting structures that will represent the value of teaching. It is very important for us to have numbered all the rafters in order to not confuse anything while assembling. And after drawing, proceed to cut, then planning and smoothing the overhangs. And after everything is drawn, we can proceed to cut jack rafters. Please pay attention, here we have cut precisely the place where the jack rafter will be in contact with the hip rafter. And here we are cutting the ends of the rafters. After excision, the overhangs going to be of course prepared in the same manner in which we did with hip rafters. Firstly, by means of an electric planer, we tear the first layer the one that is coated with an impregnation, then smoothed the surface using an angle grinder and on the end painted. And here we can already see the overhang painted in the desired color. And now we can look at the effect of our efforts. Here we can watch how everything works. Pay attention that all angles has been cut good enough, seems like the job was done very well, you never know that until the timbers are rised up. The joints between jacks and hips are also ok. Longest of the rafters caused some problems because they are quite heavy. So this part is also done, I invite you to the next chapter telling about dormers, see you soon.